Hello. Uh, quite some time since our last uh, recorded live coaching session. Uh, I've, I have been busy with a lot of uh, refactoring work uh, in the application, porting it to a new version of the programming language and so on. But uh, after this has been done, uh, I managed to implement a couple of new functionalities and uh, I think it's uh, now time to make a session about it. Um, yes, um, hello to everyone here in the chat. Uh, I, I see I must share the screen. Here it is. Um, as always, please feel free to jump in with questions and so on. The topic for today is um, strategy development revisited, um, which means we already have some session, made some sessions about strategy development, but there are a couple of new stuff and uh, functionalities to talk about, so we will make a revisit. Um, yeah, um, I think I will jump right in uh, and start the strategy workbench because uh, that's the main tool to work with when you are developing strategies. And as you probably know from, from the other sessions, um, strategies uh, can be used in different areas of the application suite. For example, uh, you can uh, load the strategy into the race center to um, create a stint plan from it, to uh, prepare pit stops based on the values set in the strategy for your teammates and so on. But you can also use strategies on your solo races, on your, for example, in the league race. Um, the strategist, one of the uh, virtual assistants, is capable to, wo to work with the strategy and uh, to guide you through the race using all the values in the strategy. Um, we will see that later on in a small uh, example on track. Um, I have prepared a recording for that um, we will sh uh, and we will take a look into that. But before we jump into this um, video, uh, let me show you a couple of new stuff here in the strategy workbench. Um, I think I should repeat a couple of things uh, so that we have uh, all the respective mm -hmm. knowledge in one place. So uh, if you, yeah, l let's start it this way. If you want to create a strategy, you first have, yeah, for sure to choose the car and the track and the starting conditions uh, uh, for your race. Uh, you must set a lot of um, required uh, settings to describe the race, to describe the pit stop rules, to describe the um, yeah, settings for a given pit stop and so on. Um, to um, make things easier, you can load the settings for example, or initialize them, for example, from your database. If you take a look here, the pit lane delta is 60 seconds. That's the default if you don't change it. But for Monza, it's much shorter, shorter. and when I uh, initialize from database, this value will be taken from the database and so on. And uh, the other settings you have to choose on your own, the, the race length is the most important one, but also uh, what are the pit stop rules, how many tire sets do you have available. Maybe uh, when you prepare a team race, you want to uh, set the driver list uh, for your session. And you might even uh, create a, a weather forecast uh, if you want to simulate this, that as well. Okay, let's start with a small example. We will have a 90-minute race on Monza um, without any pit stop rules. And we want to know what's the best fuel level to start with. And uh, we can do this uh, using the simulation. We can, in the in the default, there is the fuel level, this, uh, the initial fuel level set to 90 liters. And when I simulate this, um, yeah, the simulation starts the race with 90 liters. Um, after the formation lap, we still have uh, 86 liters left. 
And uh, yes, you can see here, the pit stop is right in the, in the middle of the race. Okay, fine. Um, we can also do it with 20 liters, which will lead to a funny strategy. Now we need two pit stops, one quite early, yeah, <laughs> only starting with 20 liters. But the question is, what is the best fuel level to start a race, a 90 minute race on Monza without any pit stop routes? And uh, this is something I've talked about before, but um, the, the mechanism behind the optimizer has gotten quite smarter with the last release because there is a machine learning approach uh, uh, has been implemented with the last release. And now uh, let's try this one. We set the start fuel to zero liters and allow 100% of optimizing on the initial fuel, which means that the system can use the full available fuel capacity of the car for uh, simulation variations. Okay, I will let run this. And this take much longer now because uh, there are lots of variations with, to try out. And okay, here's the result. And the ideal fuel level at the beginning of the race will be around 94 liters, which will lead to two almost identical stints. Um, that's quite an easy example. We will get uh, much and more, more and more complicated with the next examples. Um, and the uh, optimization strategy behind that uh, is also yeah, it could be uh, done with linear algorithms. You don't need any machine learning approach for this one. But um, we will see where uh, the uh, this technology jumps in with the next examples. Um, okay, let's take this one. We go back here. Now we will have a 60-minute race. We will have one required pit stop with required refueling, but tire change is optional. Um, let's go back here. Um, let's say 60 liters at the start and no fuel optimization. Okay, as you might expect, it's also a strategy where you have a pit stop right in the middle of the race, around uh, minute 30, exactly at uh, minute 28. Um, and because the default here says that tires are good for 40 laps, the simulation does not uh, trigger can any tire change. Yes? Uh, can the tire uh, live also be... Uh loaded from database? Uh, yes and no. Um, let, let me say it this way. Um, you see here a lot of data from your past races. For example, I have uh, hundreds of laps recorded on Monza and um, one of the data points is the tire laps let me eliminate the, um, uh, let's show it this way. Um, you can, for example, uh, compute a correlation between tire usage and lap, and, lap, and lap time. So you will see that after a given number of laps, the tire will degrade and uh, the resulting lap time will be slower and slower. And this is incorporated into the strategy calculation um, lap by lap when you are using the telemetry data. So the system will recognize at a given point that it isn't worth any more to use the tire. Oh, nice. But, but if you set the tire life here to 40, which means uh, one, uh, one hour and then 15 minutes around at Monza, 
the tires are not used, uh, used up at all. The tire life at Monza is quite high. You can double stint there without any problem. So if you want to uh, have the effect of the tire degrada degradation calculation, you must uh, run high tire usage. I have an example for that. We will come to this. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, oh, uh, uh, yeah? One more question. Yes. The pit lane deltas, are they all in a database? Um, a cup, not not from the default. That's data which uh, normally you will have to provide on your own. It is quite easy for ACC because uh, for the GT3 cars it's the same value and for the GT4 cars it's more or less the same value. But if you're, for example, using Automobilista 2 with so much, mm. so many different car classes, the pit lane delta is very, very different for each car class. And you can um, yeah, you can use the session database to define the pit lane delta for your um, pro chosen car and, and um, track. Let's see. Uh, I have set the pit lane delta, for example, for Spa, for all cars, because I'm mainly using uh, GT3 cars. Uh, to 57 seconds. But it's also possible to say, for example, for the Lexus RCF at Sanford, the value is different for whatever reason. Uh, but, but you can do it. So if you enter here a new setting. Oh, yeah, but I... The, you have to, like, get the deltas yourself. Yeah, um, they are not pre-provided by, by, by the software. No, no, no. Okay, that's uh, I understand. It's um, I, I have a couple of, of uh, data files which I can share. So if you're interested uh, to... Very to, much so. <laughs> I, ca I can send you a couple of pit lane deltas. Oh, yeah, that would be very nice. Okay, I will do. Maybe you send me a, rem a, re a reminder on Discord afterwards so I don't forget, but uh, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Okay. So, back back to the strategy. Um, so, as I said, we will now have a 60-minute race with one required pit stop. And uh, starting fuel and, and uh, tire change is totally up to your choice. And the, the, uh, the question is, what is the best strategy for this kind of race? And it heavily depends on the track. But as I said, for Monza, it's no problem to use the tires a, a one hour or even two hours. So as you might expect, a, a splash and dash strategy might be the best choice here. And let's see what the simulation will come up. If I don't use the optimizer and I have an initial starting fuel set, okay, as I s click simulate, it's the typical pit stop in the middle. But now we let the optimizer run. And he plays with the starting fuel and creates a splash and dash strategy. So, mission accomplished. If you go to another track with very high tire degradation, for example, Zandford, you might end up with a different strategy. And this is the place where the machine learning approach uh, I implemented uh, just uh, comes in. When two strategies will be compared at the end of the simulation, there are many factors which uh, are taken into account and each factor has a given weight uh, based on really myriads of data I have collected in the, in the past. And in this case, uh, the system will come up with a strategy which is yeah, most probably the best on a given track. You still, you still should use uh, your own brain and, and uh, 
yeah check whether the system has come up with something valid but in in most cases it's it will work uh, fine if you're using the optimizer quite quite a lot um okay let's try this one 40 liters i will now let the system run using initial conditions. Initial conditions means for the settings for average lap time, fuel consumption and the used engine map, I used only the input, only the input of these three fields are used. All the tele telemetry data you have in your database will be ignored. Let's see what the system will come up here, with what it will come up. It's the same. So in this case, um, splash and dash is uh, the best choice here. So. Um, but you uh, don't change the track. You want it to be on Sanford. Ah, you're right. <laughs> OK. First this one, and then after that, the telemetry data. I think this is also splash and dash. And now let's see the telemetry data. Here in the data, you can see already that uh, the lap time degradation is OK. But but I haven't you tested it before. You went with higher pressure and temperature. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, you're, you're right. <laughs> Okay, still a splash and dash. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's not what I expected. Let's see, take a look here, what we have. Uh, lap time. Ah, not enough data in here, only short races. Okay, that's the problem here. Okay. Um, Another very interesting thing is uh, the management of tires in races with uh, restricted tire sets. Um, we had uh, recently a race with uh, six, six hours, but we only had uh, four tire sets. And let's see what the system will come up in this situation. Let's go back to Monza. Okay, a normal strategy. Let's go without the optimizer for the moment. Something around 100. A normal strategy will look like this. Six stints, more or less equal in length and uh, more or less with the same level of fuel at the beginning. So now we only have four tire sets and it, it, the race will be in full dry. If we simulate that, very interesting. <laughs> the last <laughs> tire set will be used for f almost 200 laps, which is <laughs> <laughs> too very way too much way too much so uh what can we do um we can first as before try to optimize the initial fuel and um we will let the system try to optimize the tire usage so which which means that uh, it is allowed to use a given tire set more than 40 laps and uh, the range you set here for the slider is how much you allow the tire, tire to be overused it's a percentage value in this case we allow the system to use a tire set up to 80 laps okay uh, this will take quite some time i will use initial conditions here uh, 
for the moment because uh, then no database lookup will be done. Let's see what the system will come up and after this we will uh, use a simulation e also including database values. Okay, uh, not so good. Um, a little bit better. The last stint is quite short because we started with, with more fuel, but we still have the picture with uh, um, yeah, wrong tire usage. So let's include the telemetry data and let it run again. And this will take now some time because for each lap the system consults the uh, database and it will cr create around 800 scenarios to compare. This is amazing. And in the end, um, all these scenarios are compared against each other and uh, it will try to optimize and it's the same result. That's uh, a <laughs> show effect. I, I, I tested it before and it worked great. There are a couple of random factors in there, so um, sometimes it... Oh, great. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I tested it a few minutes ago and it worked. What have I done wrong? Everything's correct. Hmm. Very, very bad. Okay, sorry. But... I've loaded the strategy I prepared before for the example with the uh, Live strategist uh, handling uh, later on, and as you can see here, it double stints as expected. I don't know what's happening right now. Maybe. No, sorry. I don't know why. Um, I need to uh, go back to the drawing board and uh, maybe I, I've created a bug in the last few seconds. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, sorry, very sorry. Okay, um, but uh, it will work when the system is released in a week. I'm sh I, I, I promise. Um, Another thing which I can show you um, are the new validation rules. Um, that's something very uh, more for the experienced uh, user. Um, for example, if you have a race with quite uncommon rules, let's say you have a 90-minute race and the pit stops there must be two of them and there must be exactly in the window from 25 to 35 minutes and from 55 to 65 minutes. This is nothing you can uh, set here using the uh, more general rules. There is a window option but only one. 
or you can uh, define required pit stops, um, but only uh, the number of pit stops you have to uh, perform, but not the time when they should be performed. And uh, this, the strategy work workbench had um, a validation engine for some time now, and uh, this engine had, has been extended um, in a way that you can validate each pit stop on your own. Uh, let's see. I opened this one and it's now possible, for example, to create a validation rule which looks like, looks like this. You have two required pit stops, then you ask the, for the time of the first pit stop. The time is in uh, put into these both variables. Here's for the second pit stop and then you can compare these times that which are in minutes uh, to uh, the uh, rules as expected by the race. And when you activate this validation rule, now it is checked, only strategies which, uh, strategies which fulfill these uh, rule will be valid at the, at the end. Um, let's uh, do it. Uh, we will have 90 minute race. We will have two required pit stops. And if we don't run with the optimizer, let's say 40 laps as always. Oops. Ah, well, let's take 50. And if we let run this now. It will create here the first pit stop at minute 31 and the second one at one hour and two. The fuel usage is a little bit funny because normally it should um, yeah, start with less fuel, which we can achieve by using the fuel optimizer again. And let's see what the system will come up in this case. And that's a valid strategy for this kind of race. And as you can see here, it will double stint the tire in the first two stints and only change tires once. Okay, uh, this is the stuff I want to show you before we now jump in, in into live strategy handling. Any questions so far? As I said, uh, I will uh, check what's the problem with uh, double stinting tire sets in, in Monza. Maybe there's a little bug in there, but double stinting works as you can see here. Okay, new for the next uh, for for the last release and also uh, a couple of uh, optimization uh, will follow in the next release is that the strategies is now able to revise the strategy while you're in the race. The idea behind that is um, that, uh, as before, you create a strategy up front before the race. Uh, I have created this one for Suzuka, 90 minutes. The strategy says I will be starting with around 33 liters. We will have two pit stops. We will have we will double stinting the tire uh, on the first two stints, very similar to the strategy we just saw before. And um, when you now set this as the race strategy and go to the track where you will run a race with a McLaren on, in this case, Suzuka, and the race will last 90 minutes, the strategist will pick up this strategy and will guide you through the race using this strategy. But what 
happens when you either start the race with a different level of fuel or you have had an accident in the first few laps and um, must uh, come in for an unplanned pit stop. The uh, option for this in the past was that you can ask the strategist to cancel the strategy which means you will have no active strategy anymore during this race and you can use the engineer to, to handle all the pit stop duties, duties manually. But from now on you can um, let the strategist revise or recalculate the strategy using the new conditions. To do this you must enable this here in the strategy tab in the race settings. You can choose to revise the strategy each lap or each second or each fourth lap and so on. And you can ask the strategies to revise the strategy if a pit stop happens with uh, outside a given window for the next pit stop. For example, if you have planned the pit stop in lap 18 and you will come in in lap 17 or lap 19 that's totally fine but when you come in in lap 27 you are out of sync so um, this means you will uh, allow a difference uh, up or down of four laps and uh, the strategist will still think that the strategy is valid but if you are outside this window it will recalculate the strategy and and uh, propose a new one so um, you can set it here in the strategy tab and as always you can set it also in the session database. The uh, documentation can be found in the wiki for all the settings you can use in the session database and here is uh, the documentation for these both options. Uh, doing it in the session database you might be able to set different use different settings for different cars, different simulators and, and so on. But the easy or the beginner's way is to set it in the race settings. Okay, um, let's see how this works in real life. I now will start a video I recorded before. Uh, just repeat it. It's a race on Suzuka. It will use this strategy so it will propose the first pit stop in lap 16 or 17. Okay. Do you hear the sound here on Discord from the video? This is Marcel. I will watch the traffic. I don't. Ah, oh, that's... Because uh, you record your screen, not the window, I think. Okay. And let me switch it. We will try to record the window. Temperature and now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There are 90 minutes ahead of us. Are you get on ready. text uh, clearer by any chance? Uh, don't get you? What do you mean? Your uh, Discord streaming settings, they appear to be on uh, making the, the text clearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Yes, because we see it in 5 FPS now. Okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Change it. Okay, should work yep. now. So, um, okay, I will skip the race start. The video is also available on YouTube, so you can take a look. Uh, can take a look at the full length. Um, the idea is that the strategist will come up after the learning phase, which will be uh, within the settings, using the settings I have chosen here, 
in lap three, and uh, we'll skip now there. And we are now in lap, lap three, and the strategist will come up and tell you that you have a set strategy for this race. Andrew here. Would you like a summary of our strategy? This is the original strategy. I, I accept it on the stream deck, so I missed the cool apex start. right there. We have gained seven positions. Okay, I'll do it right now. And now he tells you the... Uh, Oliver, we have developed the following strategy. We have planned two pit stops. The next stop is on lap 16. We will refuel 48.0 liters. It is not necessary to change the tires. Okay, this was uh, more or less this, uh, the, the choices of the original strategy. Lap 16, 48 liters and no tire change. And um, I will now skip to lap 5 or 6, which is uh, after the learning phase. The strategy uh, the strategies now has full data of the uh, running session. And he detected that I started with a different fuel level. I started the race with, uh, I think, 95 liters, so I have way too much fuel for the planned pit stop. We uh, only have to refuel about 20 liters uh, to get back to the original strategy. So let's take a look what the strategist will come up. It's something here. Six seconds. Oliver, this is Andrew. It looks like we need to change our strategy. Confirm, please. I can confirm or I can deny. When I deny, the original strategy will be kept in, will be kept active. So, but I accept it. Oliver, we have developed the following strategy. We will have two pit stops in total. The next stop will be on lap 18. We will refuel 20.0 liters. A tire change is not planned. The gap to your opponent behind you is current. So. Now, he, he had, has done two things. He moved the uh, pit stop two laps um, um, uh, more to the end of the race, uh, which might be because uh, he calculated that uh, it's uh, better in terms of traffic after the pit stop and or stuff like that. And he also d detected that uh, way less fuel is needed, so the refueling is around 21 liters. But he kept a two pit stop strategy, which is um, surprising be because with a starting fuel of 100 liter and a 90 minute race, you can also um, finish with one pit stop. But because in the original strategy, uh, it was marked that two pit stops are necessary, are required. He will stick to the two pit stops, al although the fuel is um, more than enough to make it with one stop. So um, all pit stop rules, all settings from the original strategy will be kept, but only small adjustments will be made to, yeah, adopted to the current situation, which will include weather changes, which will include uh, uh, unplanned pit stops uh, for repair and stuff like that. Uh, Oliver? Yeah? Did I understand correctly from the Discord discussion that in the next version, the strategist will also say what he has changed before you have to accept? Yes, that's right. Um, I accepted here, as you might have seen, and then he um, explained what the next strategy will be. And uh, the current development or version is already the other way around. He will first tell you the new strategy, also, uh, how many pit stops, refueling and stuff like that. And then he asks you whether you want to change to this strategy or not. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Seems not. Um, yes? Uh, yes? One, yeah, one question. Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, that because of the rewrite, there was now, this is now uh, achievable. Huh? So, in terms of computing power and so on. Um, do you have any recommendations for 
uh, the, 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 the recalculation uh, interval or yeah it depends it depends heavily on your on your computer how capable it is it depends heavily on the settings in the original strategy for example if you if the original strategy relied heavily on the optimizer with lots of scenarios to be created this will be taken over to the strategies as well because uh, the original strategy or this this kind of strategy must rely on on the optimizer so if you have a strategy calculation which takes uh, let's say 30 seconds of valuable cpu power it might uh, induce uh, lags in 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 the your running simulation if your pc is not capable enough so you must check it it will get even worse <laughs> in 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 um, in the, in an uh, yeah it can get worse in the future because uh, the next release will also introduce the Monte Carlo simulation for the strategist which is today only available in the race center uh, Monte Carlo simulation means that um, the uh, strategy simulation is capable to create scenarios for the further race development not only for your tire usage and your fuel usage and stuff like that but also for the race development of all your opponents uh, this is a probabilis probabilistic approach with lots of statistical computations uh, when you do it in a race center creating a strategy with that might take even a few minutes there will be a configuration option whether you want to use it uh, in a solo race as well, but you can. You will be able to do it, but uh, it will need a very, very capable PC. Okay. Okay. Then I think I have told everything. Still not very happy about the bug but that's life so <laughs> if there are any more questions thank you for being uh, part of the session and uh, we will see you next time bye 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 bye